<laughs> and good afternoon. It's 1.11. I was going to do this in the morning, but I wasn't sure what to do. And as I kept contemplating, I thought that I would do something that I haven't done that I can remember. Uh, and that is uh, share a response as my blurb uh, to one of the emails, actually series of emails that I responded to this morning. And so the title that I've selected is, What Kind of Miracles Do We Need? And this is a re my response to a friend who sent me, an e uh, sent me about three or four emails, uh, one after the other. And this is my response. Perhaps I am in a most unusual place where I get to interact with other visionaries around the world. Like you. <laughs> who share their visions with me. Sorry, I took too long a pause there. That was only a comma, not <laughs> didn't require that big a pause. Anyway, unlike you, I still feel the OPPT and then the Swiss Indo people are providing the most hopeful bridge to actually changing the system to benefit all of humanity and allow for a broader awakening of consciousness. For many years now, I have prayed asking God to help us find a work find working remedies to stand against the criminal activity of the established old world order fraud and corruption at virtually every level of society I have shied away from ethereal solutions wanting something uh, concrete in the physical world I know you place great emphasis on the ability to create apparent miracles making objects appear out of thin air Indian gurus, I have read, have been able to perform such feats at will, yet these abilities have not resulted in on-the-ground transformation of society, that is, the kingdom of heaven on earth, for which my soul longs. My prayer these days is more about transforming the heart and consciousness of these so-called elite that have stood in the way of real progress toward that goal of peace on earth. Maybe I'm wrong, but I sense that happening with Mr. Sino and those with whom he is working. This gives me great hope that we may be close to the beginning of an actual restructuring of societal institutions. Those that resist, as you say, need to be dealt with in some way. Taking them off planet somehow would surely accomplish this. Keep on following your guidance. I do believe many people have a piece of the puzzle to help in co-creating the world we have been promised by God. Indeed, more and more people these days are waking up to the, to the state of the world, realizing that our governments are corrupt institutions, realizing that people that are at the top of the pile, so to speak, or at the top of the pyramid, seem to do things that are, well, to put it mildly, insane and psychopathic and sociopathic. Is that mild enough? <laughs> I guess not really. <laughs> uh, and many, like my friend, have, have communicated with me, not just recently, but over the years. What can we do about it? What can we do about it, Ron? It's easy to point out what's wrong, what solutions can be brought to pass. And People have suggested that we need to have the people at the top arrested or taken off planet, as my friend implied in some of what he, he wrote to me, and the ability for individuals to be able to perform miracles, such as making things appear out of thin air, such as manipulating the hologram, uh, that these are going to be important in, in swaying the consciousness of humanity, the, the average person on the street, and getting people to wake up even at a faster rate than we're already experiencing. And I don't claim, as I've often said, to have all the answers, and all I have is perceptions. And my perceptions, as everyone else's, are always based on my experience, just as your, your uh, perceptions are based on your experience. So what we perceive filters what we think is possible. I have long been a student of uh, spiritual things, of 
I mean, for many years I studied the Bible. Uh, in the last 20 years or so, I've been much more metaphysically uh, focused, looking at all religions, not studying them in the same depth that I did in, of Christianity in my earlier years, uh, but giving them, giving, trying my best to give each philosophy, each theology, uh, a fair share in trying to find the common denominator. And I, I sincerely believe the common denominator, of course, is love. But beyond that, it's getting out of the separation consciousness that has plagued humanity and allowed people like the elite to manifest for us the result of living out of an ego that thinks it's separate and thinks it's not accountable and thinks it can get away with things. That the boomerang doesn't come back to me because it's just a stick. Well, it's a curved stick and it does come back whether you like it or not. And I don't know, I mean, a long time I would have been one that said we've got to be able to create miracles. I mean, when I was younger, I wanted the, the gift of healing so that I could lay hands on people and instantly heal them like Jesus did. Uh, I wanted the gift of miracles so that I could create things that would work. Um, much of that was frustrating because I expected instant results and that perhaps is part of all of our problem. We expect instant results. We want, it, we want to be able to make the leap from where we are to where we're going without any process of getting there. And I think that's, I've come to think that that's an unrealistic expectation that we can create this ethereal jump and this leap of faith that takes us from one realm to another realm in, a, in an instant. I don't believe that's how it's going to work. Now, I don't, I admit, I don't know how it's going to come about. There might be a mixture of some pretty miraculous things that happen, as my friend suggested, uh, and as others have suggested throughout, <laughs> throughout the weeks that I've been doing these videos, and two and a half, going on three years now, two and three quarter years, uh, many have suggested the need for for something necessary that would get people's attention. And I don't know what that thing is. Will it be some insane thing that the elite do that all of a sudden wake people up like 9-11 actually backfired on them? They, they thought they were going to uh, enforce martial law and create a society that was total, a total police state. Well, they failed. 9-11 instead produced a step in a great awakening where people began to realize what is going on in the world, many for the first time. And that has been ongoing over the last 12 years uh, since 9-11, uh, 2001. Uh, it's been going on and on and on. And it continues. Yet still to this day, the elite seems to be able to block the things that we need to do to create real progress. One of those to me has been the release of the World Trust Funds, the St. Germain Trust and other World Trust Funds that have been held for the people, for the benefit of the people. And some of this, some of this wealth has been siphoned off as the elite always tries to do. They siphon it off for their own benefit and keep things going in darkness, the fellow that did the uh, the video from Ghana, the Ghana, from from Ghana, Africa, who was the economist who talked about the cheetahs and the hippos. Uh, in that video, he said that the the hippos are the people that that want to corrupt everything. They, the the most rich people in Africa are the heads of state because they they take all the money that was given for the people and they keep it for themselves, and it doesn't go down to the people. So people are starving and dying and go without without good adequate uh, sanitation and water and live on substandard conditions. And this is going on around the world as the elite continue to increase the gulf between the rich and the poor. The rich keep getting richer, stealing money from everyone else, but the resources are ours. So what's it going to take to actually bring the change? What kind of a miracle is it going to take to actually bring people to the realization that I am my brother? My brother is me, that we are really one people, one creation under God or 
under the creator, whatever term you want to use, we are one. What's it going to take to get people to understand that and stop this insane ego thing of trying to play one-upmanship and competing with each other? That's crazy. That's, look, look at the world. This is this competition thing. This greed thing is, has produced the world that we live in, where people live in absolute, insane, abundant, abundant opulence while others starve. There's something wrong with that. I'm not saying everybody should have the same amount of money. In fact, I don't believe ultimately that we're going to need money. But the bridge is to let everybody experience wealth because that will enable people to follow their dreams. It will bring home a lot of realities to people that, okay, we've all got all this money. We don't need to work anymore. But there's work that needs to be done for the good of the community. Who's going to do the work? So we're going to have to develop quickly the heart of a servant or otherwise there's going to be a little bit of turmoil and, and confusion and a lot of chaos going on on the planet because who's going to do the work? Who's going to, who's going to build the things that we would like to have now that we have unlimited money or relatively unlimited money? What's going to happen when all of a sudden these world trusts are released and people... All, all of a sudden, masses of people win the lottery at the same time, so to speak. I'm using that as an illustration. Now, we know from, from what we've witnessed with people that win the lottery that oftentimes they're broke within a year or two, even though they might have a, you know, maybe a few million dollars that, that lands on their lap all at once. But they have no responsibility. They have no sense of what to do with it. So there's going to be a need to be the, not miracles, but re-education, learning how we interact with each other and how to build community. We're going to have to let people that are visionaries have access to the media to train people and to teach people and to get people to see the higher perspective and to start connecting the dots so that we understand how we created the world that we live in and what we need to do to change it. I love what, what I understand, and I don't have all the answers. I don't know what's going on on the inside with Swiss Indo. I've never talked to Mr. Sino. I am I am a Facebook friend with one of the people that, that works for the Swiss Indo or the King, Neo Kingdom of God Sky Earth. I'm friends with uh, uh, Mr. Opry. Uh, and, you know, I, I go on to his webpage pretty much every day looking to see what people post because I'm interested. Because what the little bit that I know about what's going on there, I realize that they actually have a plan to bless the world. And it's a plan that, that goes along with the idea that it's of not establishing a, a one-upmanship religion over the thing, even though uh, Indonesia is, a, is a, the largest Islamic nation on the planet. It's not about establishing Islam, and it's certainly not about establishing any other religion. It's about freedom of religion. It's about establishing common law. This is what I understand it to be. And I agree with these principles, which is why I, I believe that that is part of the bridge. And that's what I alluded to when I wrote back to my friend, that this is something that I, that I feel is moving in the right direction. And I have long, especially since the lawsuit hit in 2005, I have looked for remedies to, to, to stand up in a world that is so corrupt where the courts and, and the whole government and, and our institutions do not have the, the best interest of the people at heart. In fact, they, have, they only want to enslave people. They only want to extort money and, and resources from people and steal the wealth and the value from the whole planet. Well, this can't go on or we will destroy ourselves. So what kind of miracles do we need to turn things around? I think we need practical miracles of people having a change of heart enough to be, to be willing to learn how to cooperate with one another, to learn how to listen, not to always disagree, but to find the common ground and to build on what's good and what's decent and what's honorable to build on that which we can agree upon instead of only focusing on what we don't agree upon. There's always going to be different perceptions because we are looking at it from different points of view. So we're going to see things differently. We're going to interpret things differently. We have different language and different religious 
filters built into our, our life experience that enable us to see a certain way and it's a challenge to see beyond that box, beyond that uh, the confines and that prison that we've erected around ourselves to keep us, quote, safe with the familiar. But the familiar is no longer safe. It's becoming less safe day by day by day as the government seem more and more out of control, more and more insane, as the world is, it goes, goes crazy. Well, there's a lot of visionaries that are working to make it happen. Now, the visionaries still have problems getting along with each other sometimes. I see that. I realize that. We've got to stop. We've really got to stop. And we, when, when we have a tendency to want to lash out at somebody and point the finger at them, recognize that we're pointing a bunch of fingers back at us. The boomerang that we throw at others comes back and hits us. We're, we're accountable. We're responsible for our thoughts, for our words, for our actions. We're responsible for them. And we need to take responsibility because together we have the challenge and the ability to create the earth that works for everybody, to create a society that serves all the people and no one is left behind. No one that wants to be part of a healthy society is left out. And we all deserve a chance to do that. We all deserve it. And the miracle is the change of heart, the change of heart that enables us to move from the old paradigm of limited thinking and, uh, and narrow-mindedness to a broader vision of the interconnectedness of all life and the recognition that each of us is part of our Creator and our Creator is in us all, and we are literally all one. That's not about excluding anybody. It's not one that agree with me. That's not the oneness I'm talking about. I'm talking about the oneness that is, that is beyond my point of view, that is beyond my filters, that is beyond my belief system, and enables me to love all, because God loves us all. I want you to get that message. And if you get that message, miracles will happen and we'll be able to create the things that we need, not only for ourselves, but for the entire world. Thank you for listening. Namaste.